Good morning, folks. I'd like to start by saying that I'm from Pittsburgh and I bleed black and gold. But given the nature of this channel, that Seahawks fans tend to create earthquakes, and according to my analytics, Seattle has double the observers of any other city, what the heck. For today only, go blue and green. Bake me a quake as fast as you can. In all seriousness, though, let's begin with seismicity. It was a below average day, but with an unusual concentration around the Caribbean, also spreading out to the ridges of the surrounding waters, up and down the western subduction zone of the Americas, too. A couple days ago, we reported the Sinabung eruption. Evacuations. Ash. Here's the shot from above. Top weather watch remains here. Now, yes, heavy rain came to Australia and remains now, but the moisture and shear is already looking down on the island nation of New Zealand set to deliver in a few days. It lacks a true eye and circular form seen from above, but that won't stop a significant force from coming to the coastline tomorrow. I imagine it is starting to rain already, and if not, that will begin before the worst of the storm. Please take heed as you see the precipitable water being confined to that storm area here. The story in Europe? Heavy rain. The main convergence band is across the coastline now, heading inland past France and Germany, on towards the east. As you can see, those are not well-defined lows, rather they are bigger shifters of the air masses and cloud moisture. Backside South Pole is blocked, which is keeping Europe from freezing too badly right now. Coming west, one can't help but catch that low still stuck in the Pacific. Stuck lows were a fly on the wall topic yesterday. Let's also pull up the temperature overlay here. Now let's go gamma. Here are the two bursts from yesterday, one from Centaurus and the other from Aquarius. Solar wind, CME impact, very weak. Barely any signatures here and no instability resulting from it. The sensitive metrics show only a little jolt. CMEs have been smaller, weaker, not as geo-effective. The flaring has been low as well. That continues now. The sunspots haven't been showing up as well this cycle either. Granted, we look to be doing all right now, but the sunspots here are indeed smaller than they've been in the past. They're not complexing magnetically like they should, and when they do flare, they either produce no ejecta or a de minimis amount from a geomagnetic perspective. Even the complex sunspots, and we do get those from time to time, are failing to live up to their potential. This beast put a moment of doubt into our two years of reporting the solar magnetic shutdown and the potential for another grand minimum. But two years of observations wouldn't be bucked by one region, and an X1 was all it could muster. No X2s, no X4s, no X10. We've not seen any such flares at all during this cycle, and we do expect to get up there during solar maximum. You may have just recently read the BBC's Sun Going to Sleep article and were unaware such things were happening. You found the right place. Fastest way to catch up on those two years of this observation, on what the BBC is apparently now figuring out, is head over to the website. Click on Premium and go down to Fly on the Wall. Members, remember we had another hour posted yesterday, taking us to around 29 hours total, but the December 12th notes on the Weak Sun are open access. Everyone can watch that. I highly recommend it for anyone who's interested or has read the BBC article on the solar shutdown. Earth's magnetic connection to the Sun is in a safe zone at the moment. Proton surges are unlikely. Corona hole facing Earth appears to have lost most of its power at this time, although it is clearly open to Earth through not only the coronal but the umbral fields as well. No blockage of the weakening opening. Shots of our star including a plasma tantrum of major filament to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.15am Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.